everybody. What I'm gonna do this week, I have a piece of poplar. This is probably aspen. There is a little crack here. When I, when I split these, I didn't quite get all the pith out. So there's a little crack here that I'm, I'm planning to cut most of this out anyway, because what I wanna do is make a smallish hollow form, but I'm gonna make it with a natural mouth opening. So it's, you know, it's only probably gonna be, I don't know, maybe what's the blue line? Six inches. Um, I did cut some of the ends off just to see how far in the cracks went. Most of them was, was just end checking. Um, this one was the only one that I was really even concerned about. I am going to cut that out, but just because I'm going to drizzle some of the Starbond Soup Thin down and just let it run down that crack. Again, I'm going to be turning this away, but just because I can. This never seems like a bad idea. All right, so that's pretty much centered there. So the center can be right there. This is pretty even um, as far as the bark goes. You know, one edge will be a little bit higher, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. I'm not gonna worry so much about trying to balance it. Enough. My last video, I got my live center stuck in the tailstock. I did finally get it out, but it was a struggle. So I drilled a hole with a spade bit and then seated the spur drive in that off of the lathe with a hammer. And that should give me enough oomph that I didn't really have to put too much pressure on it with the tailstock because I don't want to have to do that again. I could have put this on the bandsaw and rounded it off a little bit first, but a lot of times it's faster to just put it on the lathe and take the corners off that way. I knew I was going to be taking a lot of material off because the end piece that I'm trying to get out of this is going to be a relatively small one. So I just decided to get it on there with the corners and then go from there. I didn't balance this blank out very well. I could have centered it a little bit better. It's not crucial to what I'm doing for sure, and it didn't really affect me even in getting the form rounded off because aspen is a relatively soft wood to work with anyway. You know, if this had been the big piece of apple jack, I might have put it on the bandsaw and rounded it off to save myself a little wear and tear. Or maybe not. You guys know me. I just put it on there and go for it. I'm starting to get ready to make the spot for the glue block to mount to. You can see that there is a lot of tear out in this. The piece was a little bit punky, especially toward the edges and the end grain just really wanted to tear out. The spot where the glue block is going to go has to be at the very least completely flat and at best ever so slightly concave so that you don't have a hump in the middle. And now I have to knock that little nub off and then I have to sand that flat which is actually a little bit concave there in the center. Now I need to mark the new center since I lost it and it'll just have to be close enough. And this is the method that Lyle Jameson uses with his glue blocks. 
You have to use thick CA glue, and I highly recommend the Star Bond. It's great stuff. There's a discount code for that in my description box below the video. You spray the accelerator on your glue block and then line them up with that little rod and give it a few minutes to cure. This glue block is probably a little bit too long, but I didn't have any issues with it with the last one that I did, which was the Apple Jack, and that was an awful lot bigger and heavier and gnarlier than this, so I don't expect that this is gonna give me any issues. But ideally, I think probably you don't want your your glue block quite this long. It's it's just all that I had that was dry, so. Okay, I get it close with that little center trick that I learned from Lyle, but I never get it dead on, so I just always know that once I turn it around and put it on the glue block, I'm gonna have to rebalance it, and that's fine. At this point, I'm still figuring out how big this is gonna be able to be and, and exactly how I wanna shape it, so that's not a problem. Now I know some of you are probably freaking out about how much wood I'm taking off here, but again, I set out with this project intending to have about a six inch piece in diameter. I want the dimensions and the proportions to be a particular way. So I'm just gonna keep taking this down until I feel like I like the way that the proportions look height to width. And I'll stop when I guess I figure it looks right. This is my half inch bowl gouge with the 4040 grind and I just put a fresh grind on it. Look at that. We have. And still a whole bunch of tear out, but it's a little better. Boy, that made some purdy purdy. Hmm. That cleaned up most of it. Cut the right way. I still can't do a pull cut. Man. 
I started hollowing with a bowl gouge and I'm gonna drill a depth hole. Well, it's not really so much a depth hole, it is a little bit, but I'm gonna use my hollowing system. So I need a hole in the center to have enough clearance to get the cutter in there. And now I've switched to just a regular round carbide cutter and I've put the lathe in reverse and I'm hollowing on the other side because it's easier to do that. And here is why you always want to make sure that anything you use on your lathe, if it has a reverse, that it has set screws. Because I was afraid that my glue block had come loose, but what had happened here is that the whole faceplate came loose because I was going backwards. I don't really tighten those set screws down too hard. If you're turning in forward, it's going to tighten itself anyway. So uh, never use any kind of a thing on your headstock spindle that doesn't have set screws if your lathe goes in reverse because it will just unthread itself and come off and that's no good. When you have any kind of a closed opening like this the heat really builds up inside there and I think I spent longer trying to get all of the shavings out of there and especially out from underneath this rim, this undercut, than I did actually hollowing. It was kind of crazy. I refined the shape a little bit, changed that up, got it hollowed out. Uh, I couldn't really sand the inside very well and it is torn up in there. Um, this is kind of the same problem I'm having with the other project that I have going on, that the gr that the wood that I'm using is just stringy and you know it's just tearing in giant chunks. But that's okay. Um, I put a really healthy coat of water-based sanding sealer in here, and I'm just gonna let that dry, and then when once it's dry, I'll come back and try to sand it smooth again. The inside is going to get painted, probably, so, um, you know, worst case scenario, I can, I don't know, I'll figure something out, but I'm not going to think about the inside right now because that's not the point of this little process. Um, there's a, a guy that I follow on Instagram, it's Natural Selection Studios, he lives down uh, near Lansing here in Michigan. And he does some absolutely stunning work. He's, he's just incredible. Um, and he's done a lot of carved vessels and bowls and then embellished them with paint. And I think that they look just fantastic. So I'm gonna give that a try. Um, I have a Automach reciprocating carving tool. Um, this is an adapter that accepts my flex cut carving knives. Uh, it's a little bit more unwieldy than if it were just the little knife, but these are a lot sharper and a lot better tools than what came with this thing. So this is how I've always used it. Um, I'm gonna just use the spindle lock, I'm sorry, the indexing system on the lathe to hold the still while I texture it, carve it. And then, um, and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, right, that's better. I can see some. Um, I don't really have a plan. I'm just gonna kind of go for it. So, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. And that's okay. Probably.
The only bad thing about a glue block is that once you cut it off, you've lost your center again. So I got it close with my center finder, but it really is uh, a struggle, partially because the bottom's not flat. I probably should have sanded the bottom part flat first, but the whole point of putting it back on like this is so that I can finish the bottom with the tools. Now it might also be that the inside of the bottom is not completely flat, or maybe there's a lump in the shelf liner that I've got in there that's kind of holding it still. It's not ideal, but I'm going to concave the bottom a little bit anyway, so it's not going to be a huge deal if it's not completely even. All right, everything is sanded and ready to go, and now I'm gonna paint the entire outside and the bottom black and let it dry. All right, so I actually finished this and then sanded it back off um, because I found the initial way I was applying the top coat just was getting too much stuff down in the little grooves. So I sanded that off, re-blacked, and then sanded it back off again. And all I did, because this thing is wonky, because it's just sitting on there, is um, I held some 100 grit paper so that it wouldn't get down in anywhere and just did it real slow and tried to follow the grooves. So we're going to give this another whirl. With a little better information as to how I want to do the application. I might just try to do these three colors and then blend them, you know, as we go. Uh, the, these little makeup sponge things are what I've found to, to work best with what I'm doing here. Uh, Greg uses a dry brush technique, but I could not get that to not just put all the paint in the in the holes, which I want to stay black. So um, these are just acrylic colors that Lori gave me. Um, these are probably more like you know artist things. Uh, I painted the this with just regular craft paint and I would imagine that this stuff would be fine to use as what I'm doing with these. We just happen to have these and you know obviously they're, they're pretty old so um, I'm just gonna use them up. So my plan, I'm not sure what all you guys are gonna be able to see from which camera so I'm just gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna put some purple. I might want a little bit more than that, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Purple, and then some red, and some cadmium yellow. I'll do a little Bob Ross with some titanium white, but I don't use, I'm not using any white in this one, so. All right, I'm gonna start at the bottom with the purple and move forward, up, around, I guess. So one of the things I think I was doing was I was really being heavy handed and it's not going to take much to color this. So I'm kind of patting off the excess and then trying to keep the sponge relatively flat and I'm not using a lot of pressure, really just enough to kind of drag it. When I first started this, I was like, oh my God, that is purple. Oh, I don't want to use purple, but um, it actually looked really cool. So I'm, I'm going to stick with it. And I may actually have it come up a little bit higher around the bottom than I had initially. So 
So Lori told me that if I get color down in these grooves, not to worry about it, that after it's done and dry, that you can put a black, you can put black over it, get it in down in all the crevices, and then wipe it off while it's still wet. And she says that'll work. So um, I would have tried that on the other, you know, before I sanded it back, had I not wanted to just get this video finished and up. So that might be something I try another time. All right. Um, now, as far as blending goes, I don't know anything about this. Um, I guess I always have more corners. I think that I'm pretty happy with that uh, purple. So what I'm going to do now is grab a little of that. Try not to contaminate. Mm. Hmm. Hold on, I'm gonna get a stick. I mean, ultimately this is gonna get mixed, but I think that I'm gonna want some of the, um, you know, color to be pure, maybe. I don't know. So a couple of things Lori told me after the fact that will help. Uh, when blending, the acrylic dries pretty quick, so I ordered some acrylic blending solution, which just extends the dry time a little bit and makes it so that you can blend the lines together. And then also, as far as mixing goes, it's better to take a light color and mix the dark into it versus what I did, which is to take the dark color and just mix a little red into it. So I was doing it a little bit backwards, but you know, overall I'm happy enough with the colors and, and how they came out. I'm really excited to try some more of these with some different patterns in the in the carving and uh, see what see what we can get. The stuff that Greg does is just fantastic. I just love it. I think next time I need to make the carvings deeper also. I wasn't really sure how much material I had to work with. I, I, I always tend to get my pieces thin and probably too thin, um, thinner than they need to be for sure. And sometimes that comes back to haunt me. So I need to remind myself when I'm doing carving pieces that I need to leave enough material that I can get a nice depth in it and that's gonna show off the texture and the colors a lot better. I haven't done a whole lot of shorts videos yet, um, but I did put one up yesterday of a very big and very beautiful male bobcat that was down on our boardwalk the other day. Marie got a pretty decent video of it, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. It is one gorgeous beast. Well, I'm pretty happy with this being my first attempt at it. It kind of came out looking a little bit more like candy corn, but I suppose that we are approaching that time of year. So next time I will definitely do some blue and purple in the gradient, but I think it looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? And now the part of the video we all wait for, and that is the comic relief provided by Bailey. I don't think you're gonna like bok choy. Do you want to try some? All right. You want some bok choy? Or are you gonna throw it around first? You're weird. Dogs, do you know, will eat raw bok choy. Bailey says, I like it fine, lady. It's good. Getting my vegetables. 
As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm going to be having some Workshop Wednesday videos and also a new thing, Tool Time Tuesdays, coming up soon, so stick around. Till next time, y'all be safe out there.